Hello, my name is Chef Danielle Gleason, and I'm an instructor at the Sullivan University National Center for Hospitality Studies. Today, I'm here to talk to you about how we would go ahead and set a formal table setting. Knowing that a formal table setting is used in fine dining, this setting can also be broken down to do a more informal aspect. But every table setting you see today definitely has to be based on the classical form of table setting. A few key, key points to remember when we do this is symmetry. Though in nature we normally do not find perfect symmetry, in a table it allows the dining room to come together and look at it as all one whole piece. In showing you how to set a formal table, I'm going to go ahead and place the items down on the table in the order in which you would normally set the table. Again, we must think about symmetry, the way the table looks, and each individual side should be mirror-like to the other. In doing so, we'll start with the charger plate. The charger plate is a plate we put down for other plates to be set on top of. It not only protects the table from things that may fall, but it also will act as a carrier when we remove certain courses. This is the choice of the chef and the dining manager of at what point throughout the meal this charger would be removed with another plate. This again is a charger plate. It is not to be eaten on. Next, we place our silverware. Again, we have to think about the symmetry of the silverware and how we're putting it on the table per the list of the food on the menu. We'll start with the first course. And again, depending on what type of menu you have, your silverware will dictate where the guest goes. One key point to remember, most things that make people very uncomfortable when they dine in a formal setting is which piece of silverware should I use? The smart guide to go by is that you will always work from the outside in. First, we'll place down the salad fork. Salad fork is smaller than the others. Usually, in a restaurant, we only have salad forks and the entree fork. One is smaller than the other. Um, in doing so, we can duplicate the size of the silverware for the different courses on the menu. First, we set down the salad fork. After the salad fork being a three course meal, we would then set the entree fork. After the entree fork, we would then place the dessert fork. If, for instance, my chef has decided that there would be a pasta course or a fish course, there are silverware that will match up with that course. Normally for the fish, we would use a smaller one. And moving on through the courses, meat, pasta, those of course would use the entree style fork. On the other side, we will also place knives and spoons. When we sit down to a table and we see the teaspoon laid, most people wonder, well, what do I do with that? If you have a soup, you may put a soup spoon there. We tend to put the teaspoon down so that guest has something if they choose to have iced tea to add a sweetener, or if they have coffee throughout their meal, it's them there for them to use. If none of that is used throughout the meal, we can go ahead and lay it down for the dessert course if it's needed. Next, we will go with the knives that go with the courses on the other side. Though you may not feel that you need knives for different courses, sometimes a salad will come out that needs a, a knife to cut through the lettuce if it has not been cut to a point that it's easy for you to eat with a fork. So in reviewing that, we have gone with our salad fork, our entree fork, and our dessert fork. We then have a knife for our salad if needed, and then for our entree as well. Teaspoon, of course, for whatever the guest needs it for. Next, we will add what we call a B&B &B plate, known as a bread and butter plate. With that, we will place a knife. This will always go to the left of the guest, in coordinates with all the other plates on the table, of course, the same way if there's any type of design on your plate, please make sure that that design is in the same place wherever you place it on the table. Same thing with the charger plate. If there is a mark or an emblem of something of that design, you want to make sure it is in the same place. Again, remember your symmetry when you're setting a formal table. In setting the bread and butter knife, we want to make sure that the handle faces the guest so they're aware as they reach over with their right hand that that is the knife and the plate that they are supposed to use. If a person is left-handed, unfortunately we do not cater to that into the setting of a table, but letting one someone know or moving it for their convenience, remember service is about your guest. Therefore, if the change needs to be made, we have no problem doing that. After we have placed our forks and our knives and we've also placed our charger plate, we want to make sure that, again, it is symmetrical with the plate across from it. Um, by standing and looking can be a good thing. And also, many dining room managers in the formal setting will have something that lines them up, whether it be a red light, a laser, things of that nature. 
After we have placed the charger plate, we remember in formal dining that we usually have a napkin fold. There are many sources out there for you to go to to find several napkin folds that look beautiful in a formal setting. Myself, I prefer a clean, more organic table, so I will just lay a nicely folded and starched napkin on the plate. Again, per your establishment is whether or not you remove the napkin for the guest or you allow them to do that for you. After we place the napkin, we're looking at the glassware. Normally when you're placing formal glasses on a table, wine glasses, cocktail glasses, things of that nature, you want to remember that beyond five, it is kind of out of the norm. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we're covered for the courses we have and anything else the guest may want to have as a starter. So I'm going to begin by placing the water goblet. The water goblet is always placed right above the knives. In a situation where you may have more tools on your table than what you expect, you can slide it just a little bit down to make sure it is placed somewhere where it's convenient for your guests and the table does not look too jumbled or messy, if you will. After we place the water goblet, I will go in and place a champagne glass. <clears throat> the champagne glass actually comes before the water goblet, being that champagne is a starter for a meal. It is a way to cleanse the palate, start your digestive tract, and actually make someone a little ready for what's gonna come next on the, on the table. After we have placed the champagne glass, we're going to go directly in front of our water goblet, and we're going to place our white wine glass. Knowing that in the courses of meals, normally you're going to have a course before your main course that would someone would prefer a white with versus a red. And then after the white wine glass, we're going to go ahead and set our red wine glass. The red wine glass, of course, will match up with the course that follows the white wine. And that's a quick look at formal table setting from myself, Chef Danielle Gleason of the National Center for Hospitality Studies at Sullivan University in Louisville, Kentucky.